Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. This is your fourth lesson on the mineral revolution for term two. I think it's a good time to quickly recap the first three lessons. We discussed European expansion in South Africa. Then we discussed the discovery of diamonds in Griekenland West and how both Orange Free State and the Cape Colony wanted the area and the diamond rush associated with it and then we discussed the fall of african kingdoms in the whole process we specifically focused on the causa kingdom the peri kingdom and the zulu kingdom now in this lesson we are going to move on to the next phase of the mineral revolution and that is the discovery of gold there was already a great interest in south africa when diamonds were discovered but just a few years later on gold was also discovered and lots of it in the Witwatersrand. The Witwatersrand, the area, marks the largest concentration of gold in the whole world. Just to give you an idea of how much gold was found, till 2006, South Africa was the largest gold producer in the world. Now you could just imagine, with so much gold and diamonds, there was a lot of interest in South Africa. So let's talk about gold. Why is gold so valuable? Here are some characteristics. Gold is very durable. Unlike other metals, it does not rust under normal circumstances. Then the flexibility of gold. It's very flexible. It's a soft metal. You can form it as you want to. It's also an excellent conductor of heat and electricity. Therefore, it's widely used in electronic products. Heat reflection. Gold reflects heat well. Then the color of gold. Gold is a colored metal like copper and therefore it is used for jewelry other than all these things gold has a history people have been using gold as a currency or way to pay for thousands of years and then besides that uh, gold is scarce and because it is scarce it has a lot of value there are two main ways to mine gold. One would be through open pit mining and the other one would be through underground mining or deep level mining. Open pit mining is basically a massive hole in the ground. And what would happen is they would drill holes in the ground, then they'll put explosives in those holes, then they'll blast it, then they'll take the debris away to get processed and search for gold. Back in the day, they used a lot of manual labor to build a mine like that. Today, they use machinery, massive machinery. And I would like to show you a modern open pit mine just to show you the massive machinery that they use these days to mine open pit mines. Let's talk about deep level mining. It's different from open pit mining. You drill deep underneath the surface of the earth and search for that golden vein in the rock and then you build tunnels. So it works through shafts and tunnels and you use this type of mining especially when it is very deep. And that's the case in South Africa. Most of the gold mines use deep level mining. The deepest mine, it's almost four kilometers deep. That's very, very, very deep. And it's very expensive to build these mines. So you could imagine the people who flocked to South Africa for riches in terms of gold, they weren't able to build these mines because they were just too expensive. It was reserved for the very rich companies or individuals who were able to build these type of mines. I would like to show you another video, also a modern mine. It won't be anything like 150 years ago, but it will just give you the idea of the tunnel system and the shafts that they use. And then you could imagine how it must have been so long ago. We can imagine how the mines must have been at the beginning. How were the conditions for the mine workers underground? The conditions were very poor. The tunnels were small, it was badly lit, and there were a lot of dangers. There were mine fires, the tunnels could collapse, there were a lot of explosions, they were exposed to dangerous gases. So these conditions were quite terrible. Besides that, there were a lot of diseases that they suffered from, including lung disease. Today, we are going to discuss two terms, unskilled labor and skilled labor. Unskilled labor refers to workers who have no special training or experience. It is a part of the workforce with a very limited skill set. 
A skilled worker is any worker who has special skill, training, knowledge and ability in their work. A skilled worker may have attended a college, university or technical school. This marks the end of the fourth lesson. Please look at the description below and then we'll see each other next time. Thank <laughs> you.